this is Jess with Arizona Glass Classes with another instructional video creating a decorative mirror. This begins with an inexpensive oval frame from Michaels. It has an offset bezel so first I'll make a paper template by securing the paper with tape then taking advantage of the paint on the outside of most pencils. Carpenter's pencils are usually green or yellow and will leave paint. This one happens to be black. Simply rubbing the side of the pencil along the ridge will leave a visible line. case I went ahead and cut the paper while it was against the frame knowing I'd not leave a visible scar. step is to lay the paper on top of the glass. It doesn't matter if it's mirror or clear glass as long as you're on the glass side of a mirror. Tape it down using a sharpie. Mark around the edges where you want to cut. Now that you have a line that you can follow on the mirror, take your glass cutter. I prefer pushing, but follow just inside the line that you have made and score the glass. You may notice that right back there I zipped off the edge leaving what's known as a vent gives you a place to start the run as you'll see here chase the run around the edges so that the glass is broken free here's another vent It's not unusual where one cut, cut joins another to end up with a little nipple sticking out or that sort of thing, so a little trimming might be possible. If any trimming is needed, now's the time.
So once you have a good fit, now on to the resist, which is pre-cut, plotter cut, paint mask. After charging the cuts with grease pencil or chalk on a pad so that you can see where the cut lines are, trim off the excess vinyl. transfer tape. Once it's all stuck down, trim off the excess and you're ready to apply to the glass. Since we'll be carving out of the back of the mirror, clean up the back and that's where you're going to stick your vinyl. Because there's no critical location, I simply hold the resist with my arm until I get the first section stuck. Sometimes getting the backing paper off loose is a little difficult, but you'll get there. By folding the paper under and mashing the whole thing down so that there's no big gap, once you get it started stuck down, go ahead and apply the rest of the resist with smooth, even passes, eliminating air bubbles. transfer tape then weed the area that you want to sandblast once that's out you're ready to frost it I'll be using a cabinet modified to use a pressure pot. This is a modified Harbor Freight pot with upgraded regulators, a foot pedal, and reinforced plastic line with an eighth inch rock tech nozzle. The abrasive is very worn, 100 silicon carbide, and the air pressure is approximately 30 psi. I have a homemade easel which allows moving the glass sitting around and plans for those can be found on the Arizona Glass Classes site.
once I sat and looked, I realized the lights are not positioned where I would like them. And I just happen to have a movable LED light array with a magnet on the back that allows you to put light wherever you need it. Once the abrasive is flowing properly, it's just a matter of erasing the paint and silver from the glass. You need to be sure to get around the outer edges. That's where most of the misses occur, sometimes in the center, but the edges are, you want to be sure that you get a good crisp line that removes all of the paint and silver along the edges. Having a light in behind helps a whole lot because obviously with mirror you have paint and silver that you can't see through once it's gone it's pretty obvious with the light showing through. You'll notice overlapping strokes basically just painting off the paint and silver. Another really handy thing to have inside your cabinet is a full air pressure blow-off nozzle that allows you to blow off all the extra dust, blow it all away from the door so that when you open the door you're not covered with grit. Blow off your window, your lights. Double check to make sure you got all of the paint and silver off of it and you're ready to paint. Without removing the resist, paint the sandblasted area with the desired color. The darker the color, the better the blast will stand out. Without back painting, if an insect takes up residence behind the frosting, it'll be visible, so back painting is highly recommended. This project is ready for Halloween. Thank you for watching, and please take the time to visit ArizonaGlassClasses.com to learn much more. Thank you.